Hello there, and welcome to my third part with solving normal distribution problems involving tweeners and splits. The terminology for this comes from a previous video, in which case if you have not seen, would probably make this a little more confusing. But before we get too deep into this, we need to start hitting up a quick little refresher. And this refresher is going to involve the fact that you should know how to do a z-score by now. And more importantly, you should know a basic idea of interval notation involving some lower bound and some upper bound. That being said, this will get you jump started into this video. So whenever you're talking about a betweener, or a tweener as I like to call them, then you need to go in between two values. More importantly, with a given average and a given standard deviation, along with being between two separate values, you should be able to, based on these two numbers, come up with a decent area in between, oh, let's come up with something, uh, 20 and 40, just to make it look nice. So just to be clear, the average and the standard deviation are given to you. These two values are given to you and they want you to find the area in between these two values. So that being said, we're going to speed along through how to calculate a z-score because by now you should know how to calculate it. If not, please go back to one of my previous videos about normal distributions and their involvement with z-scores. But if we were to represent this graphically, you know, we want to find a normal curve with the area in between these two values. And the center of this curve is very good. And we want to find between negative 1 and 1 because those are the two corresponding z values that we have for our boundary markers. Now, if I was to represent each z-score as a lefty based on the previous video that we had done, so we want to go to the left of positive 1. Hmm, let's see here. Interval notation, negative infinity, going up to 1 using our normal CDF function. That should get you about 0.8. 413, just about. And the second one, we're going to do negative infinity going up to not one, but negative one this time because we've got two values to deal with. And it gives you that corresponding value. But wait a minute, we didn't want either of these. We wanted a tweener. And a tweener in this case is somewhere between graph one and graph two. So let's see, we draw our normal curve and let's see, nah, it's not one of my better ones, but we want to get in between the positive one and the negative one. Well, if I was to do this without using a calculator, I would take the larger area minus the smaller area. And let's see here, forgive me not lining these up properly, and I should get in between. Or in interval notation, I just want between negative 1 and 1 because the normal CDF function does that for me. And I should get roughly about 0.6827. Wait a minute. We've seen this somewhere before. That is an empirical number. These values right here correspond to the empirical rule, which means that this is a really quick, cheap, and dirty way to see if you're doing a tweener correctly. So if you do between negative 1 and 1, you should have approximately 68%. Why? Because we dubbed it to be so early in the semester, and you just showed us why. So let's see if it works for another tweener. Oh, of z-scores, negative 2 and 2. Well, let's set up our graphs, just like before, three independent normal curves. And let's see here. I want to do... See, so let's do the bigger one first. So less than negative, two, less than positive two, and less than negative two, and we want interval notation. Let's see here. Let's make sure we get all this down pat. Let's see, we find our corresponding normal CDF functions. And don't worry, I'm gonna give you plenty of time to try and calculate these on your own at the end of this particular animation. But if we go just like we did before, 
And all we care about is the between. We don't care about the one or the two. We want in between one and two. Wait a minute. That's just interval notation negative two to two. And we get something approximately about 95%. Holy crackers, it worked again. Our two magic numbers from the empirical rule. So can you use the empirical rule to somewhat cheat on your exam? Probably not, because you're not going to get these nice of numbers, but at least you get a general idea. So if I give you an interval between negative 2.2 and, let's say, oh, positive 2.2, well, then it should be bigger than 95%, correct? Most likely. But if you don't get bigger than 95%, you've probably done something wrong within your normal CDF function. So just as a quick reminder, all this interval notation is getting pumped into your normal CDF function with an average of zero and a standard deviation of one, because those are the standardized values for your Z scores. Everybody good so far? I hope so, because now we're gonna start going into the splits. Now the splits on the other hand, don't necessarily follow the same ideology, because when you're doing a splits, you're looking for the area in the tails. So if you do a z-score, you know, you've got your average in the center. That's fine. You got your two boundary values, just like a tweener. But you got this area in the tails that you want to deal with. And it's not just one tail this time. It's not a lefty. It's not a righty. It is both tails occurring at the same time. And this produces a lot of problems for people. So instead of doing this the long way, we're gonna try simplifying it using a normal CDF function because normal CDFs won't help us find values less than a particular number or greater than a particular number. So let's see, how are we gonna compensate for this using a normal CDF function? So let's get some boundary markers first. Let's go negative 10 and let's see. Oh, you can think of a nice round number, 30. So let's see here. If I give you an average of 10 and I give you a standard deviation of 10, again, these are all just numbers given to you. But the thing about this item is we are going to look in the tails less than negative 10 or greater than 30. So in a normal CDF function, make sure you mark your center, which is the average in this case, and your two corresponding boundary markers of negative 10 and positive 30. So again, we're trying to use the normal CDF function to help us out here, normally because we have two different areas to deal with. We have the area to the left, which we've marked as number one, and we have the area to the right, which we've marked as number two. Now, if this was a lefty problem with just area number one, then we would go negative infinity going up to negative 10 and we would have a good day. But wait a minute, this is no longer z-score stuff. We're going negative infinity to negative 10 with a mean of 10 this time because this is not a z-score. This is a whole value. So once again, that is an x value, not a z value and a standard deviation of 10. Whoops, don't need to write sigma. Calculators can't do sigma. You gotta give them the actual numbers. So let's see here, let's just make this a solid 10. There we go. And then if we were to do with a righty, which I know I haven't done a video for this yet, but I'm working on it. So we're going from 30 to positive infinity with a center of 10 and a standard deviation of 10. But the calculator doesn't want to do these at the same time, and I know you surely don't. So let's take a look here. Hmm, we got a normal CDF, which involves a lower bound and some upper bound, along with a mean and standard deviation. We got to figure out how to use this to our advantage. So we're on an exam, we're stuck. You know, the average is 10, and the standard deviation is 10, and we know our x values are negative 10 and 30. Hmm, what are we going to do? Let's critically think about this just for a moment. 
So we know we're dealing with a normal curve here. And if I nail this appropriately, nailed it. We've got our center of 10 and we've got our boundary markers of negative 10 and 30. Wait a minute. We've got something here. Let's see. We want that area accordingly. And wait a second here. That's not supposed to be a 10. That's a 30. Whoops. So if we were to follow our regular notation, we would go negative infinity, negative 10, 10, and 10 to follow our normal CDF formula. Plus, we would want to do the interval from 30 to positive infinity going up to 10 and 10 because that's following the normal CDF formula. Now, this is one way of working it out. But keep in mind, though, that when you're dealing with these lower bounds and those corresponding upper bounds, this can get really confusing really quickly. So let's see if there's another way of doing this, something that's a little nicer. So draw our curve out accordingly. And let's see here. We want to tackle this. So we got our boundary markers. And let's see here. Got our center again. Wait a minute. This looks like a tweener. We don't want a tweener. We want the area in the tails. But the area under the curve adds up to one. So that means one minus the tweener. Let's see here. Lower bound of negative 10, upper bound of 30, mean of 10, standard deviation of 10. Wait a minute, this could work. One minus the area in between should equal the area in the tails. Brilliant, because if the area under the curve is one, then if we take out that area within the curve, all that we're remaining is the tails. Aha, this is one of the best ways to solve a tweener is to look at that middle area and completely cut it out of your entire distribution and all you're left with is that nice solid area here and here. Now that being said, we have our two ways to solve a tweener. We have the plus method where you find the area in area one plus the area in two using two different normal CBFs or you can do one minus the tweener and that will give you the splits. Not literally, you don't cut up somebody in between and you eventually get them to split. Well, that's a dirty joke for another day. But more importantly, this is the tall guy saying, sorry for the door slam and my son came in. But more importantly, if you're dealing with the splits, do one minus a tweener. If you're doing a tweener, worry about the lower bound and the upper bound. Now you know how to work with a normal CDF effectively. And for the record, don't forget, Show all your work. Even if it's a multiple choice question, show your graphs. They save you more times than I can count. Signing off.